This pounds. thing is so light. That's nuts. Bro. That's so light. That's crazy light. Dude, this wow. thing's gonna move. What's up guys? We got some more stuff for the MR2 today. We are getting very, very close to possibly having this thing fired up for the first time. Still got some things to get done, but to start off with, we got our clamps from Vibrant Performance. These are the HD clamps. These are what we needed to finish up the intercooler piping. These are three and a half inch HD quick release clamps. So we got three of those from them. These things look freaking awesome. These came in their polished finish. So got those guys. We have been taking a look at all of the wiring and we actually have the wiring harness kind of just laid in the engine bay here. Not everything's plugged in. We still need to get the coils and spark plugs, but the harness is back into the car. We have it plugged into our adapter piece that Fuel Tech made us and we are getting everything hooked up and we are getting ready to fire up the dash for the first time, make sure all of that is good and ready to go. Today, we're also gonna be working on the oil feed and return to the turbo, because we have not done that yet. Just went over to uh, this place called Gearhead and we got all the fittings to uh, do that stuff. And then, yeah, I think today we're gonna be focusing on like the intercooler piping, getting all that mocked up to this water to air over here. So this is the water to air intercooler. This had barb fittings on either side of it and uh, Wyatt actually just got these ends cut off. So now our Vibrant HD clamps fit over that very nice so we can weld those guys on either side of our water to air. Then we just gotta get a charge pipe made and then the other side ran into the compressor side of the turbo and we will be all good to go there. And then we're also gonna have to pull the compressor off to get one of the other uh, quick release clamps on there. So this is a V-band flange that is on our precision turbo here. We're actually going to have to lop that guy off and weld a uh, quick release clamp flange onto the compressor housing itself there. But yeah, overall she's getting close. We got a lot of work to do, so we're gonna go ahead and get to it. All right, we have both of these flanges welded on to both sides of the water to air intercooler right there. So now we can use our vibrant HD clamps on both sides of the intercooler so we can just quick release it when necessary. And then we got this piece right here mocked up to go into the intercooler. So this is just a four inch uh, 90 right there that we had to cut down a little bit because it is a pretty tight fit coming off that throttle body there. And then that goes into this four inch to three and a half inch reducer back to the same size clamp to go right to our end on the intercooler there. It's looking like it should fit pretty good. So I think we're gonna probably send it there, get that all fully welded out. And then yeah, they'll just 90 right into our intercooler. And then we have to make something to come off the compressor into the back here. And like I said, we still gotta pull that compressor housing off to get the flange welded onto that guy. I was gonna say it's a bit of a sad day. We're gonna cut up our precision. Yep, <laughs> cut up the brand new Turbski, lop yep. it right off. But that's what you gotta do. Don't have that. Then we're gonna have to figure out some sort of way to mount the intercooler up. We're thinking about making a brace like off of this guy right here to this existing mounting point and then making something underneath just to support it. But it should look pretty good when it's all said and done. So this intercooler is just gonna hang out pretty low down there. We'll still have plenty of opening around the inlet of the turbo right there. So air's not restricted coming into that guy because we didn't want the intercooler like right up against this. So we should be looking pretty good there. And then I've also been working on getting the oil feed done. So we have a oil pressure sensor in the block and that is done out of the way. And then we're just reusing the sandwich plate that we had on the other engine. It used to have two T fittings right here for both of the twin turbos. But now that we're only having one turbo on there, I just put a plug in that guy right there. And then this will be our new oil feed to the Turbski. Get an oil filter on there. And then just gotta drop the pan, do a return. She's coming along, <laughs> getting there. I correct you, but uh, what? you said two T's there, buddy. Two 90s. Two 90s. Yep, that's what I meant to say. Yep. <laughs> yeah, two 90s coming off. No longer have twin turbos anymore, so plugged one of those guys up. Well, here goes nothing. Got the compressor housing in the bandsaw here. Send it. About halfway there. It is kind of hard to watch seeing this happen to a brand new turbo. But we 
got to do it. Oh, dropped her. That's that. No more V-band. That was a really clean cut. Nice and flat. Well, as nice as that cut was, got to do it again. And I actually need to come behind this lip right here because if you look at our flange right there, it does not slide over. It is very close. So take that lip off and then this will actually sit inside of that groove right there. Grind this down, clean it up, get that guy welded on. All right, almost through cut number two. Should be good to go this time. This one's looking pretty straight as well. She's gonna have to tap on there, but it fits. It's a little lopsided down there. Got a hammer? Do I have a hammer? <laughs> Look at that. Perfect. It's on there so good we don't even have to weld it. Nope. Just roll Fresh with it. Press fit. That looks really good. I wish it just looked like that, no weld. Right. It looks so clean. All right, we are making really good progress on the MR2 here. We got the charge pipe going into the intercooler all done. Right now we just need to make a mount to actually hold the water to air up in place. And then we just gotta make this charge pipe to go from there to our compressor housing. We got the turbo back on, everything's tight and finalized. We have a oil feed fitting with the uh, oil feed line I actually ran to it. I still have to take the pan off and do the return, but I got the oil return fitting on there ready to go. So that should be pretty quick. Our oil feed is tight into the sandwich plate right there. Just gotta get an oil filter on the engine. And then I also had to take the exhaust back off. We're still waiting on the little kickouts to come in, but I took it off to get a wide band bung welded on right there. So that's where our sensor will be. I was originally gonna put it on the inside of here, but decided just to stick it on the outside. It's gonna be much easier to get to. And then we can kind of tuck the wire out of the way there but she is coming along and right now we actually have it up on the lift and we are getting ready to see how much this thing weighs. We uh, ran over to Cletus's shop and borrowed their scales. So shout out to them. And we are setting it down right now onto the scales and we're gonna see where everything's kind of sitting. Granted, this is no fluids and we're still missing a couple things like the trunk and little miscellaneous stuff. But for the most part, everything is inside the MR2 that we're gonna need. How are we looking? Shoo! What is it? Same year I was born. Nope, never mind. Off by a couple. You were not born in 03. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Dude, 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds. So that's no fluids here. Let's add the uh, weights here. Let's just go a little over. It's gonna be roughly about what we need. So I got two, actually I can slide these underneath here. One there, one there. So that would be about the tank's half full, like that. So, so 2020 ish. 2020 dude, this thing got so light. <laughs> Holy dude. crap. What did it used to weigh with you in it? With me in it, it was 2650 or 2670, so, something like that. So then what was it without you? I'm not that fast at math. It was 20, 25. Yeah, like 25 500 something. Dude, we've took 500 pounds out. Jesus. I mean, dude. granted, there's no fluid in We're it. We're missing some stuff. And the radiator. The radiator's I mean, not in there. Pretty close to having everything on it, though. Dude, we lost so much weight. I mean, you figure we got. Okay, let's throw this on there too. I'll just rest this back in the corner here. Yeah, kind of where it's gonna go. Not sitting on all oh, the tires, so better, dude. We've got 28 and a half to 27.8 percent on the rear. Dude, she is so light. Two thousand yeah. pounds. I mean, 200 yeah. pounds, what else is there? We just a got lot. a charge pipe yeah, we and got some fluids pipe, some fluids to add. and some radiator lines. Everything's there. Yeah, that's mostly everything. The axles are in, everything's in. Dude, that's nuts. Dude, that's so light. Dude, she's gonna move. Those doors, <laughs> those doors did a lot. Yeah. And we didn't even do the carbon so T-tops yet here? that everyone wants us to do. Right. Everyone, <laughs> get the carbon T-tops. For real. I got so many messages. Bro, show these to Kyle, show these to Kyle. Well, how much are you saying per gallon is gas? Six and a half. Six and a half times. Oh, so we're gonna actually have a lot more than 40 pounds on the yeah, front Yeah, so here. that's 65 and just gas, and then water is eight pounds. Yeah, I was wrong. When I said those would be half filled, that was not enough. 
All right, sitting in the MR2, we have weights in the front to simulate how much we'd have up there when it's full of fluids. Yeah, I misspoke. I thought they were 10 gallon cells. I don't know why. Yeah, so no, they're I only fives. A too much weight, but yeah. So we've got the accurate amount of weight in the front for full of fluids, and Kyle's sitting in the car, and uh, she's pretty light. She's at uh, 22, Dude. 22. Two, oh. two, two, two. Dude, that's like 2,200 pounds. pounds. That's 400 pounds lighter. Than what it was than when it ran it the 8.3. Just the weight savings alone Should would be enough. technically put it at a 7.90. Yeah, you know, if it's a tenth for every 100 pounds. pounds. Dude, that's so light. I was hoping Brother. for 2,400 with me in it. That's nuts. We're missing a couple things, but we're not going to be adding over 150 pounds more. No. Not at all. We might be adding, like, maybe 20 more pounds in lines. Dude, with it right now, I bet you there's another 50 pounds total. Yeah, probably, like, 50 pounds. All we got to do is run the lines from the water box. Yeah. And that's like it. And yeah. then put actual fluid in it. Because we might have a little more weight right. in the lines when they're all full of water and stuff. Right. But I mean, it's be so a, close. A couple of pounds in the lines. And then we're going to have maybe another 15 pounds in water in the radiator. And that's it. I mean, plus once we do the T-tops, that'll yeah. just make up for it. Right. Like that's, Dude, those are a good 10 this thing pounds. is so light. That's nuts, bro. It's literally 2,000 pounds without me in it. That's so light. That's crazy light. To put this in perspective, when it went the 8.3, a 170 pretty much, it weighed, I think it was 26.70 with me in the car. It was for sure at least 26.50, like somewhere right around there. So Dude, to nice. be taking 400 pounds out of the car, that'd be like having two more of me in the car and 100 pounds. Right. We'll have to go back and double check the weight bias because we might have to still add a little nose weight. Yeah, we're not done. But so the weight bias is, I think it's better. I think, what was it? Do you remember well, what it was at last time? No, I'm going to watch the video where we took it to their shop and I'll yeah. see what the weight bias was when it ran the 8.3. But yeah, considering that the weight bias still isn't like 50 50, and ideally we want, we want to get it as close to 50 50 as possible, right. we still might end up adding that extra 100 or more pounds, even more on the nose to help combat that. But the way I look at it, this thing's staying under. 2400 with me in it so so right now we're at 46 to 54 54 rear bias i think that's about what it was 46 front 46 to 54 yep i think that's about where it was so, let me so it might be beneficial just to add another 100 pounds on the front uh, 100, with 100 pounds 100. it'd be a 49 51 split yeah and it'd still be Dude. 2300 and it'd be at 23 something like probably a little yeah. over 2300 See, with everything done, I bet you'd be down 200 pounds. We could still add 100 pounds on the nose and be a 50-50 weight bias. Dude, I think we go ahead and add the 100 pounds. We'll do the carbon tops. And, dude, it should be pretty set. Yeah. Dude, that would be almost a 50-50 weight split across the car, which right. is way better than it was. Yeah. Because I know it was nowhere near that before. Yeah, we gutted everything out from under the dash. I mean, she went full race car, guys. Getting rid of that big intercooler, the big radiator, like... Just, dude. It was all overkill That's stuff. so light. That's so light. That's nuts. The I'm fact that it went that fast with 400 pounds more than this. Dude, this thing's gonna move. So I just rewatched the video when we took this thing over to Cletus's shop, and I put it on the scales there when James was with me, and it weighed 2504 without me in it. And I don't know how much gas was in it. And then when I got in the car, it was 2644. So now the car right now without me in it. And I was still with the weight in the front simulating yeah. like the fluids, right? It was yes. 2100, like even 2100 pounds. Yeah, it was 20. It was 2080. But I gave us a cushion of another 20 pounds okay. for the radiator and everything. So okay. 2100 without you in it. Okay, so yeah, now it's 2100 without me in it. So 400 pounds less. And then with me in it, it's 2250 ish. Yeah. So it's not 100% done. There's still little things, but I mean, it's obviously so, so much lighter. And the weight bias before, when it ran the 830, it had 45% on the nose and 55% of the weight was over the rear tires. Uh, if we added that 100 pounds more to the nose, we'll be lighter overall. Our friend Ryan just got here. Yep. And no. Or that's John. John. That's John in the Subaru, yep. yep. I was going to say, so with 100 pounds more on the nose, the weight bias is right around 49%. And 51 in the rear. Almost yeah. a 50-50 split. 48-52 with 100 pounds. So if we went like 150, 
of removable ballast to kind of dial it in. We'd be like right It'd there, 50-50. Like right so, dude, that's a huge improvement. Yeah. Huge. Like, that's going to make a world of a difference. So, I'm pumped on that. Right. And then Dang. the nice thing about that is to get to 50-50, we still have to use removable ballast, but it's so close that we're, like, to get just to the 44 and a half, before we had to add all that weight with sandbags weights all yeah that, that was stuff. that 45 44 percent that was with the bags and everything yeah. so so right now now if we can just add a little bit of ballast up front and get it even closer like that'll be sweet dude i'm excited for this thing our plan seems like it's gonna work out how we laid everything out so yeah getting everything on the nose that's how you got to do it with these cars yeah this thing's sweet especially with all the new data acquisition we'll have dial in the short track a little bit more this thing's gonna freaking, it's gonna run, dude. It's gonna be a rocket on rails. All right, we are getting very close here, guys. So we got the harness ran through the car, and then this is the adapter that FuelTech made for us. The kind of adapter jumper harness to go from our Wireworks one to our new FuelTech FT550. And a lot of the sensors obviously aren't in right now, but if all the sensors were in and everything was reading and we primed our fuel system and we had a starter hooked up, and then all we did was flip this switch right here, um, I think the car would run. So we got power to the computer, comes on. Uh, we do have to run a main power to our little fuse box right here. But other than that, everything is hooked up and it's very, very close. So we just got some things to button up on the car, get that oil drain done, a whole bunch of little stuff, but it is very, very close. I think within the next couple of days, we should be able to hear this thing make some noise. We're still going to need to do a lot before it's like ready to run and drive but we are very excited to hear it start up and it's almost there. So that has power to it. Everything should just be a plug and play. So that made it very, very easy for us. So it's essentially, you know, the engine setup's exactly the same. All we're changing really is like the turbo setup and the fuel system a little bit. So yeah, should be pretty straightforward. We'll boot up a tune in there. They're gonna send us a base map. We actually might have our friends over from JBR come down and help us load up a base map. We're gonna be running basically the same setup their Civic is. So they could come down and just help me get it fired up because we did change some stuff with the triggers, which we'll explain later. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. It's good in there. Still jump box powered, <laughs> nothing changed. I hope you guys enjoyed this update video on the MR2. I know these last few videos, we've been kind of stuck in the shop just working on this thing, but we're gonna be here until we get this thing fired up. And then hopefully once this is done, we can actually do some activities outside of the shop, get this thing on the dyno, go to the track and do some other fun stuff. But that's just what it is, guys. I really hope you've been enjoying all of our progress we've been making on this car and she's getting very, very close for the first startup. Like I said, hopefully within the next few days, my goal is by the end of this week, we can hear this thing running. But even if we get that done, there's still a lot of little things to button up and we're gonna be here until all that stuff gets done and then we can get this thing out of here, get it on the dyno and keep going from there. But the fact that we got 400 pounds out of this thing from when we started is freaking insane, guys. So when it went the 8.3, the car literally weighed over 2,500 pounds without me in it. It was just over 2,500 pounds, and now it is 2,100 without me in it. Granted, we're missing a couple things. I'm probably repeating myself, but that is so much weight out of the car, guys. 400 pounds, and it did the 8.3 like that. We're going to be making more power. We have an upgraded fuel system, all that stuff. I'm just super excited with uh, the progress we're making on the car. I think we're really doing it right here, and I'm really hoping it puts up that number. So... I'm getting excited, guys. She's getting close. I also want to let you guys know that me and Wyatt actually went on a road trip a couple days ago, and that's why we haven't posted these last few days. And we have a very, very big surprise in store for you guys, and I think you guys are going to just be blown away and love what we went on this road trip for. I mean, it's freaking awesome. I, I can't even stress it. You guys are going to be pumped. At least I hope you guys are, because I'm freaking pumped. Big, big reveal coming soon. Don't know when that's gonna be, but you guys are gonna love it. I can almost guarantee it. So that's coming up. That's gonna be it for this video though, and we will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.